a Georgia sheriff decided to put his hand down the dress and touch the breast of a black female judge. This was a white male sheriff. The judge happens to be a television judge who used to serve in Fulton County as a state judge that is in the city of Atlanta. This is an update to a story that I brought you when it initially happened. Let's put up the picture of the sheriff and the judge. The sheriff, his name is Cody. Cody is out of Bleckley County, Georgia. Cody was indicted, officially now indicted, okay? The woman you see is Judge Glenda Hatchett. Judge Glenda Hatchett was at a sheriff's convention in a place called Cobb County, Georgia. At that sheriff's convention, that white elected sheriff decided to put his hand down her dress and touch her breast. He did this in front of her date, who's also a sheriff, a former sheriff named Thomas Brown. I'm gonna give you some background to this insanity. The Cobb County Solicitor's Office, they have officially charged a Georgia sheriff accused of groping a prominent former judge. Prosecutor said former Bleckley County Sheriff's Chris Cootie groped Judge Glenda Hatchett at a sheriff's convention earlier this year, okay? Now, I did some background on Sheriff Cootie. Sheriff Cootie, according to the record from post certification, records show the state patrol fired Cootie in 2007. After a bizarre series of incidents resulting from a domestic dispute, including allegations, he let a 12 year old drive his patrol cruiser on the highway and hindered investigation of a domestic incident. But he then later decided to run for sheriff after being fired from the state troopers and Bleckley County residents voted him in. Let's put up a picture of, Gl- of Judge Glenda Hatchett. I want to say this for the record, uh, Judge Hatchett is my friend. I've known Judge Hatchett for many years. She's one of the most remarkable people you will ever meet. When this happened, I received a phone call that night. I was aware of it. We reported on this story on Indisputable. I did not disclose her name because she didn't want her name disclosed at that time. Today she's willing to have her name disclosed because she's getting ready to tell her story. Let's keep her picture up. Let me remind you of this remarkable woman. Judge Hatchett has served on the board of three Fortune 500 companies. HCA, The Gap Incorporated, etc. Hatchett presided over two Emmy nominated nationally syndicated shows. Uh, Judge Hatchett for 13 seasons, Sony Pictures Television. Judge Hatchett won a PRISM Award for Best Unscripted Nonfiction Series for a special for television. Judge Hatchett serves as the national spokesperson for CASA, Court Appointed Special Advocates. I happen to be an ambassador for that organization. We work with foster children. And we help advocate for them to get permanent placement. That's the kind of woman this is. She was sexually assaulted. Now, when I give you the background of how it happened, it is going to make your blood boil. Let's put up a picture of Sheriff Thomas Brown. Sheriff Thomas Brown is a decent guy. I've known Sheriff Brown as well for many years. Sheriff Brown is the former sheriff of DeKalb County, Georgia. That is located right next door to Atlanta. Sheriff Brown brought Judge Hatchett as his date to the sheriff's convention in Cobb County, Georgia. She was there as his invited guest. Channel two spoke with Sheriff Thomas Brown, the former sheriff of DeKalb County, who is listed as a witness to the incident. Brown said that remembering that day brings back Many unsettling feelings. Sheriff Brown said that Judge Hatchett was his guest at the conference. On that day, Sheriff Cooty groped Hatchett as he was introducing her to sheriffs at the Renaissance Atlanta Waverly Bar. That gives you the scene, all right? There's more. Sheriff Brown said three sheriffs came to the stand up table including Sheriff Cootie. 
and the president of the Georgia Sheriff's Association. Brown said he turned his head from Sheriff Cootie and Judge Hatchett as they were talking. Here's what Sheriff Brown said and I quote, as I turned to my left to focus back on the two of them, I saw his hand go down her left breast, Brown said. I grabbed his arm and threw it off of her chest and basically said, what are you effing think you're doing? And that's basically where it ended. Now that's according to the sheriff and other witnesses, Sheriff Brown grabbed Sheriff Cootie's hand and threw it off of Judge Hatchett. Now I know I'm not supposed to say this, okay? I'll cop or no cop, that's a closed face action response, period. That's in the defense of others, it's completely legal, it's within the context of law. There's more. Sheriff Brown said he was so angry that his first reaction was to do more than take his hand off of her. She was there as my guest, so I was obviously upset, Brown said, obviously mad. He was obviously intoxicated and my response would have been and I obviously don't give a damn. Brown said Hatchett told him the incident shocked her. After that, she had a rough time of it, according to Sheriff Brown. Um, there's more information here that's not contextualized in the article. When this happened, this happened in front of other cops, including the president of the Georgia Sheriff's Association. None of them arrested Cody. All of them had the authority to do so. Why is that? Because in the state of Georgia, a elected and elected sheriff is a constitutional authority which has arrest powers throughout the entire state. Meaning every single sheriff at that um, Renaissance bar had the authority to arrest Cody. It was done in their presence. It was done uh, physically to a woman and every single one of them did nothing, not a damn thing. Not one of them utilized their powers for good to effect an arrest on Cootie for obviously sexually assaulting Ms. Glenda Hatchett, a judge. Now, it doesn't matter that she's a judge. The fact is it happened to her and Cootie should have been arrested. So after the incident happened, It took weeks for the Cobb County authorities, the location, the jurisdiction that it happened in to even investigate and render a conclusion. As soon as they render a conclusion, they take out a warrant for the arrest of Sheriff Cooty. Sheriff Cooty at this time is on the run, okay? He knows what's coming down. So his sheriff's office, they released a statement saying, "Oh, the sheriff is not available because He's on a Christian missions trip. He eventually turned himself in to satisfy the warrant. He has now been officially charged by the solicitor. Channel 2 Action News did receive a statement from the sheriff's office and Cootie after he turned himself in. Sheriff Cootie said he takes the charges seriously and will comply with all legal obligations placed upon him. Now here's the thing, Cootie, the sheriff has admitted to doing it, let me show you. Cootie said that while it would be improper to contact Judge Hatchett, he looked forward to personally expressing his regrets for an offense at the appropriate time. He has admitted to the issue at hand. He wants to apologize for it. First of all, Yaz need to go to jail. You should, have, you should have received an ass whooping that night. That's what was supposed to happen, but it didn't, okay? Because you were among colleagues and your white privilege along with your badge obviously is unstoppable. I mean, you can do that in a room full of police and nothing happens to you and you did it to a black female judge and not a damn thing happened to you. And they tried, they tried to kick this down the road. Cobb County didn't want to really deal with this. Let me show you the man who's now in charge of prosecuting 
Sheriff Cootie. Let's put his picture up. His name is Barry Morgan. Barry Morgan is a native of the state of Georgia. He's the Cobb Solicitor General. Okay. What happened to the very basic notion, the human notion that we are to protect people who are vulnerable in our societal construct? She was a guest at a sheriff's convention and the only criminal was a sheriff. And then the other criminals decided to provide aid to the original criminal. Do you really think they care about the rule of law? You gotta think about the context. You take that into any other context, let's say, you don't have police officers, you have a company outing, okay? Something like that happens, likely the police are called and the person is apprehended, right? It doesn't matter what job, it doesn't matter what industry. Typically, if somebody does that at a function, somebody's going to jail, but not the police. Um, Adrian, you are an attorney and you have a background dealing with this kind of harassment. Tell us what you see went wrong here on various levels, obviously. Well, what I can first and foremost tell you is that what the sheriff was doing was exercising power. It was a thought that he wanted the judge to play small. He saw a black woman, an individual of dual marginalized identities and in a position of power. And so what he wanted to do was to check her, to make her play small, to make her feel small. This wasn't about sexual gratification in any way. This is about feeling powerful and feeling stronger and better. And the thought that I can assault you among other law enforcement members of the community and nothing will be done. And that's exactly what happened here. And so that was one of the biggest failures in terms of having these individuals whose job it is, who is who are charged with enforcing the law, simply look away. Even though this individual is a judge, and this is also why, you know, it, it just makes me truly, truly just realize the fact is that we as black women, we can elevate and go to all different levels in society, but still individuals will still take this effort to try to tear us down and use various means of doing so. And here the sheriff used sexual harassment by way of an assault and a battery. And again, with the time that it took to actually proceed with prosecuting and seeking charges against the sheriff, Again, that delayed sense of justice, that denial, the fact that the judge had to continue to work and to push for some semblance of justice here tells you how our system is so incredibly broken because at bottom, it is here to serve cis white male hetero yeah. individuals in our society and particularly individuals like the sheriff. Yeah, we're gonna continue to follow this story to completion. And listen, let's keep the pressure very high, all right?